introduction and for the, for the nice introduction. Um, I hope that you will find it interesting the talk and hope it can raise some, some questions for you. Uh, I would like to start my, my talk this evening um, showing you something that I'm sure every one of you is in touch with, uh, which is Google Map. So uh, Google Map is probably one of the most downloaded applications for the mobile phone and one of the most used tool in, uh, in the computer. Uh, the reason of this success is due to two main points, let's say. Uh, first, GPS. So everywhere it can give you the exact location where you are. And second, uh, it can suggest you many things around you that can be interesting, let's say restaurants, shops, or something to see that like here, here is in Rome, and this is the Colosseum, of course. Uh, I hope that in the end of this talk, um, you will be really surprised to see how such like an high-tech application um, in fact, um, it doesn't work so different from what our brain does and, uh, and that it does from eight, since 80 million of years. So uh, let's start with something very high tech, which is the brain, in this case the human brain in particular. So uh, normally what we can do is divide the brain in different areas and each area of the brain uh, are involved in different, um, let's say, computational stuff like uh, memory, languages, comprehension, and everything. The one we are interested in this evening is this area, which is the major temporal lobe. And as I said here, is, uh, it belongs to, to the memory. And especially what we are interested in is inside this area, a special structure which is called the hippocampus. Now, why it's called the hippocampus, I think is pretty clear from this picture. Uh, hippocampus is the Greek name for the, for the seahorse. And as you can see, this is a human hippocampus, and this is very, very similar to the, to the CEO shape. Now, if you try to imagine to dissect the hippocampus in thin slices of 200, 300 microns, and try to put the slice under a microscope and see how it looks like, you will see that it, this is how it looks like, this is a scheme, of course, um, and you will recognize three main regions inside the hippocampus. One is the dentate gyrus here, which is composed by a small cell called granule cell, uh, one is the CA3 and the other one is the CA1. Both CA3 and CA1 are composed by very big cells that are called pyramidal cells and you will find it later why they are so important for, for this talk. Uh, well, the um, uh, hippocampus is known to be important in the role of, in, uh, in the role of episodic and special memory. Now, how we know that? Um, the evidence is coming mostly from experiments uh, in which uh, in animal like rats uh, or, or mouse, um, the, the researcher destroyed or damaged the hippocampus somehow, and, and in this way they show that the mouse cannot recognize anymore, cannot memorize anymore the environment where it behaved, where it lived. But we have also evidences from human, this is probably uh, one of the most cited example. Uh, the EHM patient um, he was a patient that suffered of a very, very severe form of epilepsy in uh, the parietal temporal lobe. And uh, because of that, they decided to remove completely this part of the brain. Uh, and so they removed uh, the, the hippocampus in both of the hemispheres. So this guy, this man hasn't anymore the, the hippocampus. And what they saw is that, of course, he improved his condition. He has no anymore epilepsy, fine. But the problem is that he, was, he wasn't able anymore to memorize a space where he was, where he was living. Like to give you an example, uh, for familiar reason, he moved to another town for the war where he was a child, and he wasn't able to memorize where it was the barber or the shop or the restaurant, even if he went there 50 times in his life. While he completely, uh, uh, the, the memory of the previous town where he lived when he was a child, it was completely intact. So before the surgery, there was no problem to remember the stuff. Um, I hope I give you enough evidences to show that the um, hippocampus is really the place of the special memory, especially also in human. Uh, but still, the question is how it works. How can cells memorize uh, and can create a map of the environment that uh, is surrounding us? Uh, so we start with the first protagonist of our talk, which is Professor John O'Keefe, who discovered in the 1971 the place cells. Uh, so what are the place cells? The place cells are uh, pyramidal neurons, like the one shown here. This is coming from one, my collaborator in my lab. Um, and they become active. There are cells that become active, really active, when the animal uh, 
uh, enters in a particular uh, place in the environment where it is. Only in that case, otherwise they are completely inactive. Uh, how can O'Keefe um, discover that? So he was able in the 70s to implant an electrode inside the brain uh, in the hippocampus, uh, recording the activity of one single cell. In, in an animal that was able to behave, to move freely. So uh, the, the black line is the, the track movements of the animal, and the red spots is uh, the activity, the moment in which they record the activity of the cell that we are recording. And as you can see, the cell is active only when it's getting in this area, never in the other part, right? So uh, there's a strong link between the presence of the animal in that area and the possibility to the cell to recognize the space and become active. Uh, then, of course, uh, technically speaking, there was a strong improvement in that, and I would like to show you a video. Right, so the animal has to move in this uh, path, right, and uh, this is the, the recording a fiber uh, that is implanted in the brain, and you can record seven different cells. Each cell has different color. The spot is when it's active. As you can see here, uh, for example, in this region, only the dark blue cell is active, right? Then you have a big spot, a uh, small spot with the green cell, then you have a very big spot with the red, and then you will see that every time it moves, uh, mostly, at least mostly, uh, for each place, for each region, you have only one cell that is really active. And so, yeah, and, and this is, I mean, it's just an improvement in technique. It's, all, it's the same that O'Keefe described, and now here you can see that each cell has a diff, has a, each particular place field. Yes, like here. So here you have the yellow. You never saw the yellow before. You see only there in this region, right? Yes. Now, uh, is this the story? I mean, it's, it's that's enough for the brain to create space around him, or uh, there should be something else? It should be uh, a bit more complicated. Of course, it's much more complicated, the story. And, and this is quite clear because in 2005, um, two researchers, um, Maybrit Moser and Edvard Moser, uh, they discover the, the grid cell. So what's the difference between the grid cell and the place cell? Uh, the grid cells are located in uh, a different area. It's not hippocampus, but it's a very close to hippocampus. It's called the interrhinal cortex. And this cell is different because it becomes active uh, when the animal passes through uh, different spots. So it means that I showed you before that the place cell is active only in one region, right? Uh, the grid cell, this is uh, the activity recorded only in one cell. Uh, and as you can see, you have one spot here, one spot of activity here, 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 and everything. So now, uh, if you try to connect this spot together with the, this yellow line, you will see that this, uh, this spot creates in a certain way corresponding to the vertices of a grid made of equilateral triangles. And why they do that, I, I hope this picture can summarize a bit. Uh, they do that because they provide the, the base coordinate system, right? So they're not related to any uh, references in the space. They just create, let's say, the coordinates of the environment where it lives, right? So bigger it will be the environment, bigger it will be the map. And on the other side, of course, the place cell is active only in one region and is related to uh, references that you can have. It's like, of course, if you, um, if you visit the Colosseum, if you visit, I don't know, the Tour Eiffel and everything, of course, then you will get an association of the place you are because you see the, the monuments, right? And yeah, so why, why all these evidences, why all these discoveries become so important? Uh, of course, first of all, because they reveal the mechanism of the spatial navigation, right? But one thing that is gonna be a really important open field is that uh, it's largely known now that the early stage of Alzheimer's disease affect uh, the, the first brain region that is affected by the Alzheimer's disease is the interrhinal cortex, the one I showed you before where that is involved with the grid <coughs> cell. And it's known when you do some tests with a, um, when you try to analyze this disease that the first symptom that you have in all the patient, in human patient of course, is the impaired in the special condition. This is the first thing. So that's why uh, a misfunction, that's why a not proper function uh, of, the, of this neuron 
um, determine the lost the possibility to recognize environment around. And yeah, so that's it, the that's it, the main evidence that come out. That's why they get the, the Nobel Prize. But I just want to let you understand that this is just let's say a first step, and now things are going more deeper and deeper and deeper, of course. So I would like to thank you for, for the attention and of course I'm free for questions. <laughs>